I don't even know who's doing it. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the January 12th Happy New Year reintroduction of the AmbiFest Influencers Working Group. Uh, I have to pull up our agenda. Does somebody have the agenda link by any chance? Yeah, yeah, right here. Do, do, do. Oh, sorry. Thank you. It's really coming in hot on this meeting. Cool. Uh, let's look at our action items. Oh, two things that I said I would do. Uh, neither of which got done. Well, that's a great way to start the year off. <laughs> so to read this up for the call, uh, we had two bits, uh, getting back to guests about our support for HTTP delegated routing uh, and Casey to get a review on the Unix FS spec. Uh, we looked at uh, delegated routing. I've been following the, the <clears throat> developments on the RFC, um, or the, sorry, the IPEP. Uh, so far, so good. It's looking all right. I think um, the biggest challenge we're having is like, we, we've moved farther away from being able to sort of work on our gateway. So the, most of our concerns are practical um, from, the, from the perspective of like how to actually getting time to implement. But um, if we had to do delegated routing, I'm confident we would do it this way. Uh, and then on the Unix FS spec review, similar story, we've finished refactoring our Unix FS uh, resolver in a Rust into a single crate, uh, which should make it easier to reason about. Um, the other challenge there is just like we move past the spec and we have an implementation of Unix FS in Rust. And so now it's kind of like the lid's closed on that and everybody's um, sort of grinding away. And so from the perspective of the spec itself, is it blocking if we don't have somebody review it? Uh, so it's like no, not IPIP, like to have IPIP, mm -hmm. you <laughs> yeah. either introduce something new or, or div. <laughs> This is Unix like, FS needs to be ratified. <laughs> it doesn't need filling to be ratified. the gap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, I'd say it's better to if we take time. It's we are not under pressure. Like it's already for multiple years in production. So it's more being diligent and uh, refining the spec. It's ready when it's ready. Um, but uh, I, this is like a special case because we, it's a, like unlikely we'll see IPI peeps, which change something here because it's like so ossified relatively to our ecosystem um but I, i'd say it's like a, not a high priority but at the same time would be cool to like merge it um as soon as like has a bar when it's like useful because mm -hmm. uh, uh, in multiple like multiple times, at least me personally, I wanted to refer to some things like, oh, how DuckPB does some things or how uh, Wikipedia, uh, 20 millions of files in a single directory, how that works, having that thing, which we couldn't just link, even if it's like not super clear, uh, would still be a very useful resource. So. Completely agreed. Okay. So, so like, I mean, I, it, are we, I mean, I guess as long as some people, even if it's just within PL, I guess, think it's uh, it's, a, it's a useful level, I think we might as well get it merged so that there is something durable and we can start linking to it. And then mm -hmm. if people, whether it's our number zero or others, find problems with it, we just get incremental PRs on top. Yeah, I'd say like uh, at this point, uh, more than one person uh, did that kind of like low level technical review. Uh, and uh, there, there, was, there, there were some discussions around that. So I'd say if we get like one or two people just proofreading it, mm. um, kind of like a new person, just, just oh, what's this Unix FS thing? And maybe like flagging some things around order or clarity. Uh, if, if there are no like huge uh, red flags, I, 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 I would just merge it. I can do that. Yeah, so I would appreciate like proofread and, and comment on the PR. If it looks fine, I can move it forward. Cool. Yeah, that sounds good. And you know, I'm also thinking this might be a good way to engage some of the Andrews doc writers um, in terms of them that are trying to get more up to speed on IPFS. Like they'll bring the they'll bring the writing style lens plus this a way for them to be edified. But hey, Roman, if you're able to look to that, that's great. Yeah, yeah it shouldn't be to the exclusion of other people looking. Cool. 
All right. So I can also take the I'll take the action to um, also ping the 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 interest IPFS doc writers. Fantastic. Um, and Steve, this puts you up next on logistics. Yeah, I, I, I should have. Well, this is largely or this. This is Daniel, but I just want folks to know. I think we we talked about moving things to Luma. We have moved to Luma. Um, that is the source of truth. The IPFS community calendar, sorry, community Google calendar, I should say, uh, is like is no more. We're actually gonna. I'm trying to see if I can just get access to like change the title so that there's no confusion. But like we've we've stripped this event from that calendar, so that hopefully people don't have duplicate events showing up anymore. Like we're moving everything towards Luma. The docs.ipfs or the ipfs or docs.ipfs.io website is also pointing to it. So, like, that is the thing to, to use. Uh, and, and then the other thing is, you know, we didn't we didn't have um, TPM read here this week, but he's got this time fenced uh, fenced up for future weeks. Um, I, I was planning to uh, have read like help us with some of the logistics of this meeting in the future in terms of making sure we've got the meeting notes, sending the reminders, etc. Um, just so that that isn't falling on you or I, Brendan. Um, and then likely some of the, like giving an update on where we are with specs, which we'll hit on Lytle's next. Like I'm hoping to take that off of Lytle's plate and like put that on read to at least give us the inventory of where things are at. Um, so anyway, point is we'll have lead, read to be able to lean on to help more with this, this meeting. Speaking of that, I mean, I think one other thing I would, I'm bringing up, would like to bring up in New Year is it's been really fun, uh, sort of chairing the meetings or whatever. But I think in the health of uh, ecosystem, it's probably a good idea to rotate who's chairing this thing. Um, I'm not saying nominate read. Great mm. to see that the support structure is in place. But um, I am, uh, hey, Daniel. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what you're up to these days, but one other thing I would like to stress with this is like, I think in my little tenure here, we've managed to get the sort of chairing of the meeting to a fairly um, to like facilitator, like facilitator E role, uh, which I think would be, um, if you look at recordings for the last prior calls, it's like much more just about running the agenda and keeping the meeting on time and making sure that we are staying focused on the right discussion items, uh, action, things that would be really nice to see happen uh, that I think we'd improve on this year are just like letting folks know that this call is happening, like dropping a quick note you know, on, on the morning, in the morning, that seems to generate a little more attendance. But beyond that, I'm wondering if, I don't mean to put you on the spot, Daniel, but somebody, all I'm saying is like, I don't think it necessarily needs to be like super engineering heavy chairperson. It can be somebody facilitating things, which will allow me to sort of join and focus more on actually contributing on the like spec side of stuff. I want to, I'd like to spend more time this year actually reading through IPEPs and trying to contribute more on that frontier. Um, not sharing the meetings would help me be able to do that more effectively. So I'm wondering if if, yeah, if anybody's I mean, willing to step up. I, I think I think we can have I think we can have Reed share it unless Daniel, you're really wanting it. I I think this is certainly within his uh, you know, uh, wheelhouse in terms of being close to the implementations. Obviously, Daniel has other orbits that he's involved in too. So I, I think I would that's probably where I would bias at least for now, unless um, Daniel, you, you really want to. Yeah, no, I think I think that's good, but I think the main idea is uh, to get this off uh, Brand Brendan's plate. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm willing to step up if if Reed can't do it next time, and um, I mean if he does, then great. If not, um, I'm happy to step up, and uh, yeah, we'll do my best to 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 step up for that, and and just kind of like create a bit more of a feeling that it is this is a community driven uh, meeting, but it's going to be hard to uh, be at that level of uh, facilitation. I got to say, Brendan. It's just very fun when you're just kind of like, you know, roll in these meetings. You will do just fine. <laughs> Whoever does this will do just fine. Yeah. Let, I, let's... I'm a glorified circus clown. <laughs> well, completely agreed on Brendan's uh, proficiency, um, but I'll make sense, Brendan. Uh, Daniel, it's, 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 it's read unless we hear other, unless we communicate otherwise, at least for this next turn. Thank you. Okay, cool. So moving on with what will be my last meeting chair. Uh, I don't know what's going on with this back update. Uh, okay, I, I guess I'll share my screen because uh, 
I have something to show. Um, long story short, hopefully I'm sharing the right thing. Can you see my screen? Yeah. All right. Uh, so I took a stab. Uh, so we had a uh, we introduced IPIP process uh, as a very light structure to propose, review, and then make a decision on spec changes um, or introducing new specs. Uh, but the problem was, uh, it, it's like uh, <laughs> the curse of the success. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, we have so many IPs and at the different stage of uh, maturity or impact. So uh, I took a stab um, after discussion with Steve today and uh, tried to figure out uh, the most basic uh, way for us during this call or asynchronously to reason about what's in flight, what's ready for review, which things are being read, marked as ready for review by other people. Uh, if someone wants to like be in the loop, uh, probably this board uh, will be that resource. And the idea is uh, if there's a new IPIP, we add it to a project. Uh, it's called IPIP pipeline. It's within IPFS org. It lands in needs triage column. And that means like either during this call, we notice something or asynchronously, uh, if someone is uh, involved with IPIP uh, from, from stewards group, we can asynchronously like move it to in progress and just keep it, it. It's like a limbo, it may take some time, but at some point when it's like ready, implementation wise, spec wise, <coughs> um, has a, a working code from uh, at least one implementation, like Kubo is usually our reference implementation for the prior ones then we move to the ready for final review like i did before with those like two here and um and we essentially like decide oh do we ratify it and move it to this ratified column or do we say uh it's nice or maybe we change uh change the way we want to do things and then we just move it to deferred so it's kind of like catch all archive for now uh, for example, Cloudflare proposed a DNS link resolution of, along with DNS sec record, kind of like a proof. But as a part of that uh, IP, we, we realized, oh, it's actually should be part of DNS over HTTPS. It's not like specific to IPFS or specific to DNS link. So that essentially did not get ratified, but it was still, it's still a useful resource, which you can refer that, oh, in IPIP uh, 296, we discussed this. And th that was like the takeaway. Um, so that's like all, that's all. Uh, uh, I think it's nice because it fits on a, one screen and more or less we can reason about those last three columns. And uh, there's like a basic automation. So all things here are pull requests. Uh, pull request has IPIP document, it's just markdown. But the nice thing is, a uh, nice thing about this is that, oh, if a pull request is merged, that means it got ratified. If it got just closed, then it is like deferred. So that happens automatically. So we don't need to like babysit this board as well, uh, which I think feel the final stage is nice. Uh, we don't like, grow this column too much. It automatically moves to the second, the, the last two. Uh, so yeah, so that's it. And uh, from the perspective of IPIP, uh, the person that is doing the triage uh, will just add it to IPIP pipeline. And usually it's enough. It will appear here and we'll get it from there. Um, so that's uh, that's the update uh, from uh, IPIP pipeline. And uh, the idea is that uh, read uh, already proposed uh, some improvements to that uh, IPIP process uh, doc documentation we have. Um, so uh, I want to talk with read and kind of like uh, incorporate maybe like more nuance to this and document as a, uh, this board uh, as a part of the workflow. Um, it's, you know, it's a first step, but I think it's like way better than a wall of pull requests. So it should be easier to eyeball. When it's like a publicly, uh, it's not private. I made it public. So you don't need to, to have GitHub account uh, to, to see it. Cool. That's fantastic. Thank you, Lytle, for putting this together. Yeah, th thanks, thanks, Lytle. A couple of quick thoughts. I know we just pulled this together, which is great. I assume if we haven't already, we'll like update the IPIP repo to link to this board, um, just to give visibility. 
you know, more more visibility to it. Um, and I guess one of the other things we get here is you know, we can order things manually to kind of give a sense of priority of mm -hmm. uh, of things. I know we haven't maybe we haven't done. I guess when are you thinking that some of the triage would occur for this? Uh, so I think it, this would be more or less visual aid for like for right now we'll be we are use, still using IPFS implementer sync and I have mm -hmm. we have this like IPIP corner. Yeah. But I think that during the corner we'll be only looking at the ready for final reviews column. Um, mm -hmm. So for example here. I think that another maybe like something to move there is delegated content routing HTTP API. Yeah, I was so, going to say that. Uh, so kind of like moving to the next uh, point is that like Kubo 18, uh, Kubo 0.18 will be shipping um, uh, change to the defaults around routing. We will be querying in parallel uh, DHT and CID as a contact. Um, and that means uh, would be nice to essentially like merge whatever we have in the spec. So we have a description of the current state and we can always like refine other more methods like uh, double hashed privacy preserving uh, delegated routing would be separate IPIP. Mm -hmm. um, keeping things uh, in smaller chunks may also like it, make it easier to review and reason. Uh, so that would be my flag. Uh, like the next thing on the agenda would be uh, what would should we re review asynchronously? uh like what's ready for the final review i'd say two ipi peeps one is ipns signed records uh i, I already mentioned that before weeks before long story short we are able to fetch cars and blocks from a gateway and verify them on the client but we were not able to do the same for ipns records and with this IPIP, we will have that capability. So light clients will be able to do both mutable and immutable pointers. Um, and it's a very small one, uh, but it, it closes the gap. And the second one is uh, the, the delegated routing in Kubo 18. It's already implemented on CID.contact, uh, uh, our like interplanetary indexers, and in Kubo 18, uh, IPIP has a spec for the HTTP API. It's fairly small. So those two things, um, I think maybe like the next time we vote, because this week a lot of people are on the call, uh, so not present here, and also not we're not able to engage on the issue. Yeah, just as yeah. a meta point, what I think this helps, this uh, board will help us do is just short circuit the thing that we usually do after the review corner, which is tee up the next things for review. Mm -hmm. Now you have an async spot. So I would just start to like remove that from our schedule and say, let's use this thing instead. And then <clears throat> that should help. You know, if you want something to be reviewed at the next implementer stake, make sure it gets in the ready for final yeah. reviews. Yeah, cool. yeah. I think that's a sensible thing. So that way we don't need to like discuss that during this call. Um into it. Yep. Fantastic. Uh yeah. Next up, Lytle. <laughs> okay. I, I I I don't know if it's interesting, but I just wanted to like, given that this is recorded and the folks uh, interested in our uh, implementation, the wider ecosystem may be following. Uh, ju just a PSA that the good things are coming to the web platform. And uh, one, uh, web transport transport for lip P2P will be enabled by default on every Kubo node. And the cool thing is that it does not require getting cert from Let's Encrypt or other organization. You can use self, essentially you can use self-signed certs. Uh, and the expected hash is in the address itself. So we don't need any PKI. We essentially have random self-signed and that's uh, still valid in the browser, uh, in Chromium at least. But I've, there, there are tickets uh, for Firefox to support web transport. Uh, in this mode as well. So that means uh, IPFS implementation in JavaScript running on a web page with delegated routing HTTP API will learn about peer who has the data and most likely that peer will talk web transport and JavaScript running on a page will be able to directly connect to the provider without any proxy, without any relay. Um, so that removes a lot of scaling problems and also makes uh, 
deployment way, way easier. You don't need to set up any certs, et cetera. And the second update on the browser front is that we are collaborating with Igalia to bring uh, native support for uh, ED25519 keys, which are the default key type in lp 2 p and also in Kubo. Um, sadly, web cryptography APIs did not, like still do not support them, but uh, we are working towards uh, out of the box support. And that will bring, uh, Essentially, like the cost. Uh, one, you don't need to like polyfill, introduce a huge polyfills in in JavaScript and run uh, cryptographic things in the user land. And second thing, uh, it will be like way less expensive if the if, if like the native uh, uh, API is used. Uh, this is kind of related to the fact that in Kubo we like we switched from RSA to those ED two five five nineteen keys. And if I remember correctly. Um, Martin probably has a link to uh, some benchmarks, but uh, uh, like there's no a big uh, difference in verifying. However, the cost of signing with RSA is slightly higher than this than this new ED25519, which means if you are running in a web browser uh, from the JavaScript, the cost of signing um, things uh, as a browser node will be significantly lower even like it's already lower than RSA, but will be even lower if we get the native uh, implementations. Uh, so those are like kind of like hand wavy uh, uh, in progress updates, but uh, I think it's useful uh, to know that those things will be landing because the moment we have like those uh, more and more peers with web transport and uh, the lower cost of running uh, node in uh, JavaScript uh, is, uh, that will enable us to do ver verifiable retrieval uh, in a browser without having to like run any separate software, like without IPFS desktop and things like that. Uh, so that's kind of like wider PSA, I guess. After Kubo 18, we can discuss more details. Oh, I appreciate it. I think that I just want to plus one the idea of PSAing stuff. Like this is a Good move. <laughs> yeah, it, but beyond that, I don't. I don't have anything to add. It's a nice PSA. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, I, I linked uh, to the kind of like meta issue around the web. This uh, adding those curve uh, keys to the web uh, crypto API. Uh, if someone, it's more, more it's closer to like lp 2 p People are more interested in low level lp 2 p and cryptography. But if you are I know that I know people are interested in using uh, the same key for lp 2 p for assigning IPNS records uh, and, and and other things. Um, so it may be more maybe way more interesting to people beyond even IPFS. So that's why I wanted to mention. Fantastic. All right, and then I think last but not least, Daniel. Do you have an agenda? Yes. So I just wanted to bring up that, um, I mean, part of the move to the community calendar, there's sort of this other initiative that I'm working on, which is just updating some of the information on the IPFS website. And so I thought this would be a good opportunity to share with some of you uh, that this is a great uh uh, opportunity to also add information that is relevant to this work group and other work groups. I know that we share the meeting notes um, and in the new website, in the updated website, we're going to uh, display also all of the different working groups working to improve IPFS. Um, as I understand it, the main sort of topic of this session from all the times that I've attended is really discussing the specs and, and you know, some of these PSAs. Um, and so it sounds to me like the main sort of information to surface in addition to sort of the existence of this work group is the fact that this spec process is a big part of what we're doing um, and how we're driving the IPFS protocol. But does anything else that you think is relevant, um, uh, just reach out to me um, and uh, I'm happy to like uh, work this into the copy and into the existing changes. Yeah, I mean, I think at a, at a high level, this isn't the place to come if you have, you know, questions on how to use, you know, Kubo or Iro or whatever, um, you know, use whatever their dedicated support forms are. But like, if you're 
if you're reading the specs and you're trying to make an implementation and you want to know what other people are doing or you want to influence you know maybe which direction we go or find some other people to like pair on an idea like this is the place to to, to show up brilliant love it fantastic yeah th th really excited about the effort i mean the sort of sort of related to this something that has been on my mind is you know, uh, you know for historical reasons uh, multiple of the ipfs implementations from pl as in js ipfs and kubo are kind of embedded are, are, are kind of presumed by default in the you know, ipfs docs uh and to some degree on the ipfs website i'm sure at least on the website you're detangling that daniel and i think we'll probably want to be doing some of the similar on the doc side i guess um you know i get two a couple of thoughts there are one well i get one i just want to make sure that uh other ipfs implementations don't feel like kubo and js ipfs have like first rights to any of those um real estates uh, you know, if anything, you know, obviously, I think it's probably ideal to be stripping like Kubo out maybe from those uh, or at least be creating equal space for others. But I like I assume something like Iro has no desire to get their docs under docs.ipfs.tech, but would probably appreciate a link out um, to them from docs.ipfs.tech. Uh, so I um, you, like we do have, there are a couple of docs writers focused on IPFS within Endres. You know, I've already been kind of talking to them that they should be thinking about this uh, this problem. I guess just wanted to surface in this meeting that um, like if there's anything that would help your particular project uh, and using the some of the domains that we have, um, please speak up. And we want to make sure that it's you know a common good that all implementations can benefit from. Uh, you know, we, I think we need to figure out what we do with the Kubo side, how much we rip it out. And make it a separate thing or, or or what have you but just i just want people to know that's like that's all fair game that's up for reevaluation um and want to make sure we're again, using these to help everybody not just legacy implementations yeah thanks for flagging that i would also add that that is in fact one of the biggest themes so the the reason i'm bringing this up is because the spec work is obviously tied to multiple implementations and that is the sort of the the driving theme uh of this website update it's really to accommodate for all of these accommodations um, I know that we've had this sort of some evolved version of the IP IPFS implementations table. Um, and actually a lot of the work that I'm trying to do now is to figure out a good way to segment and to sort of help newcomers navigate that sort of uh, um, that uh, journey through all of the different um, implementations. And so um, that that is a, the big theme. So just wanted to flag that, but thank you for, for like uh, bringing that up, uh, Steve. Yeah, you can really understand how this, like, the IPFS website itself has kind of a dual mandate, right? It's both to, in this new paradigm, it's both to explain IPFS concepts and connect people to IPFS, it's like tools, right? Like, how can you actually take those concepts and put them into action? And so, like, that's, I think if, if from, like, a high level, we stay focused on making sure that a reader can really get to understanding the benefit of this technology and of this protocol quickly and then scaffold them themselves into an understanding of that. And I, I think as someone who writes an outside implementation, it doesn't totally bother me that like you have a, whatever a legacy implementation sort of showing you here's how it works. Maybe you mix that up a little bit here and there, but like only when it's, I think as long as we stay focused on the reader, right? Like if, if we, overcomplicate this in the name of fairness to the implementations and in the process hurt the reader's capability of understanding why something is a good idea. That's, I think that's, I think we're not doing anybody any favors. And so I, I want to just sort of balance the design by committee or the like fairness tendencies, which are important, but like also should, in my view, be subservient to, can somebody very quickly read any given piece of content on the IPFS website and use that to understand what IPFS is, um, which, as we know, is really hard. <laughs> like it's very hard to like explain some of these concepts there. There uh, and and I've been chatting with some of the folks working on some of this copy, and they're doing really really great work. And I just hope that one of the things we can do as this group is sort of stay out of their way a little bit and let let the like people who are trying to simplify things simplify things and then we can find ways to 
for like if if Iro puts up like a really killer demo of like specifically how to do like I don't know whatever fetching of a specific sub DAG in a UFS directory great and like here's here's the like link to a very fast demo on how that works cool and I think that's like a great and but that's a moment where it's a nice demo that helps a user better understand a, a concept um that to me is like where we would want to stick um at some point we do need to explain to folks that they have choice and that there are multiple implementations great but that's like a web page um and so that, i just want to make sure that i signal that that's that's how i sort of view this i don't view it as like it's really easy to descend into well you know we're not represented here <laughs> and like that's it but like that i think that's missing the core point which is just can somebody understand what this technology does and why they should use it like yeah yeah my, and and, and a big rant. part of that thank you for really like sharing that because i think a big like what was a sort of a common thread in what you were saying is that there's also different audiences and different levels of expertise and uh all of these different audiences have potential interest in IPFS and, and they may have different sort of technical understanding and they may not be interested in all of the technical details, but they really want to understand some of the core concepts. Um, and so we want to accommodate for these different people who are very important to IPFS, but have different needs and different levels of understanding. And, and so I appreciate yeah. you saying that. Yeah. I and mean, like, you can see how like we can put that into practice, right? Like what's the fastest way to get started with IPFS right now? Download Brave, turn on this setting. <laughs> like that's like, you know, a really fast way to get started with IPFS. That's and like, cool. And then we can talk to you about some concepts. Do you need, you know, and people can self-select, right? As soon as they're like, well, but I need command line. They, they will find their way to command line and like that. Yeah. Lovely. Anyways, yeah. thanks for recognizing yeah. that. I just want to make sure that. Yeah, that, that's great. I mean, you yeah, so taken to an extreme, you, the, there could be a concept like um, you know, fetching data from, um, sorry, fet, fetching content, or, sorry, fetching a given CID, and you now see a text box that's got 20 different tabs, one for each implementation of what that looks like. And like, that's probably not like, that's a ton not of good. coordination. That's not what we need for the user. You know, yeah. And to some degree, Kubo probably has a bit of a leg up here in that it has a CLI for doing a bunch of things. Like, I don't I think that's probably good for getting started. It's not like a great interface for building applications on top, but like, if you want to poke at different things with IPFS, like Kubo does expose a lot of those uh, things that you like, don't need to build any wrapper application. You just need your terminal. And like, it's probably good for letting someone poke and try some concepts uh, before they graduate into more of a library that they embed within their, within their app. And, and so if they, in that case, if that's one of the ways that Kubo can serve, cool, great. And we don't have to worry about it taking up too much real estate for those use cases. Yep. And I, I would modulate that with one extra thing of like, given that there are docs writers and folks working on copy, like if you use a pull instead of push approach from the implementations where someone goes and checks the, the IRO docs and sees like, oh, there's like one page on the IRO doc site that is like decent. We can link to that, <laughs> right? And then, and that's that's like a great way to like get. You, obviously, like it'd be delightful if you're like, hey, we're going to link to you in this section of the website. And it's like neat. Then we'll tweet about it and, and help you know circulate that. But I think the where you can you can take that one step further and say, okay, great, everybody, we're getting we've been doing some user research and we're finding folks are a little bit confused about, uh, you know, how to scale up their service. It's like, oh, cool, then. What we should really do is make sure that we either talk to the um, uh, talk to the Elastic Provider folks and like see, like, hey, do they have a really good demo for like getting stuff up and running with that? And can we make sure that's linked to um, either in a blog or a newsletter or somewhere? And yeah, I just think that it's like we can make this more of a community effort instead of being like, um, and it, one of the ways to do that is just take the approach of taking a highlighter to great content that helps people understand um, instead of trying to require uh, representation in all places or being afraid of over-representation of Kubo. Kubo currently has the best docs, in my humble opinion, because it's been around for a while and like lots of people rely on those docs and it has like meaningful amounts of traffic. You know, we might have uh, critiques of them, but I just want to be careful that we keep in place what is working and don't just like take that away in the name of fairness. 
Um, I think there's some like great moments where we, it would be really, it also just scales better for teams like ours. Most of the other implementation teams are like sub sub 10. And so if it's like, hey, if the ask is make one great tutorial about X or just even make what's your best piece of content for getting started with Iro, and have that be highlighted on the IPFS website. That helps everybody, right? Because then it's like, you know, we put a ton of time into our quick start guide. That'd be a great place to start. Do I really want you digging around our sort of like nascent configuration documentation for like understanding how, you know, we currently support parallel uh, CID.contact and DHT fetching? No, because like, it's just not, it's not taking a highlighter to the, like the good stuff, right? Um, it's there, but it's not great. Um, and that's where I'm, I'm hoping users will find one of the things that we had in the early days was just like, you had to go digging through like IPFS notes repo and like into markdown files to like understand how things were advancing. Ideally we can avoid that and like have the IPFS website represents great, useful, up-to-date information. That alone is like a really high bar. <laughs> and so like, if we stay focused there, I'd be delighted. Cool. Th thanks, guys. I mean, in sort of, sort of related. I know, Roman, if I'm correct, I or if I understand correctly, there has been some discussion around like up leveling the presentation of our specs and like letting that have more of a presentation view. I was going to bring that up. So perfect, perfect. Cue. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I've I've been I've been tinkering with uh, specs.ipfs, um, and well. As I, as you know, there's a lot of stuff, kind of more or less, all over the place, depending on on uh, the the what what you want to look at. And so the the idea has been uh, really to try to figure out what is the best way to have a unified location for all the specs that's easy to understand and navigate, that looks good, but that doesn't require people who work on specs to learn crazy new formatting, to become professional standards writers or anything like that. Trying to strike that balance. And so I do have a, a, a generator that can process a slightly enhanced form of markdown uh, that uh, supports, you know, cross-reference uh, definitions, the ability to like easily link between specs and, and, and that kind of stuff. And so really this is at a stage at which I think it would benefit, it, it, there's very little there because I haven't started porting over like a million specs before talking to people, but I think it would really benefit from uh, feedback and input from this group in terms of what the priorities are, in terms of whether this feels like the right overall direction, um, and generally get a sense for, you know, wh whether people think this is this is helpful and, and, and good. Um, and then trying to figure out if this is right, um, what is the MVP? I don't think the MVP is to move all the specs at once in a big bang transition to this new thing, because that'll take forever before delivering any value. But maybe it's uh, moving over some or all of the multi-format stuff uh, that is currently sort of like semi-abandoned. I mean, some of it hasn't been touched in, in forever and has like uh, obvious issues. Some of it needs uh, needs a bit of love. Um, so that that that's one option. Um, uh, another part of it, uh, which is less developed, but that I've I've looked at, is is whether this is a good place to start unifying test suites as well. Um, where I'm coming from with that is I worked on the web platform test um, project before, uh, which has uh, hundreds of thousands of tests for you know what is considered the entire web platform. Um, and so it does like all of WPC, um, TC39, a bunch of other stuff like that in a single repo. Um, I'm slightly concerned about having all specs and all tests as a mono repo because that might create a little bit of noise. Uh, at the same time, the value of having everything together is is interesting. Uh, it makes it very easy to have like test suite, test suite run reports be stored there such that they can be integrated in the spec such that when you're reading the spec you can see which implementations support what and what is tested i mean there's there's a whole potential for for cross-linking between these things that that web platform tests has, has done a bit of and that i think is valuable um but anyway yeah 
happy to present it in greater detail, maybe at the next meeting, if if that if that's useful, and and obviously to share links with the with the early day stuff. Um, what I want to say is that I've sort of like I picked this thing and started running with it. If you think it's totally wrong, just like tell me. I, you know, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd rather have you like scream at me now than 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 be grumble than grumble about it uh, six months from now. Um, and yeah, let, let let me know what you think the fires are uh, as implementers. Um, you're you're like you know it, the way the the. The, the way web standards work is that that um, implementers come before standards writers in the in the order of uh, in the priority of constituencies and so so the idea is that this should be really really be something that helps implementers more than anyone else um so you know vitally for the people here and the people maybe listening later uh like really don't hesitate to to, to bring in ideas opinions etc had no idea this was happening and it's very cool so this website is you, this I, is specs.ipvs.tech. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll, sh I'll share the links. I'm not sure which channel is best to discuss this because it's a bit all over the place, but I'm happy to use the implementers channel. Um, it, it, it's fine by me. Yeah. Okay. When in doubt, okay. I'll, sh I'll share a few links afterwards. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's that, yeah, re re really cool. Th thanks so much for taking the headway here or yeah, le leading charge here. And uh, so is it fair to say that, you know, two weeks from now, you're up for kind of giving you know, more of a, a screen share on this? Yeah, sure. 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 Happy to. Cool. Awesome. But yeah, don't, don't hesitate to send me stuff in the meantime. That way I can like build it even, even more to spec. Ha. Huh. Um, pun not initially intended. <laughs> cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I think this is a great spot to call it. Um, and we will chat next time, uh, two weeks from now. I think just to set up, uh, we've decided we're going to have a new chair and we've decided that we have this new fancy pipeline of stuff to review. And so let's have a look async and try and get that in place so that when the specs corner actually happens, we have something to discuss. Thanks so much, everyone. Yep. Have a good, good time. One. Thanks all. Ciao, ciao. Take care. Bye. Bye.